Hi, this is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to Krypton Report. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's a Krypton Report! <laughs> host Tyler and welcome to Krypton Report, a podcast dedicated to all things Superman, Supergirl. We're going to look at the Supergirl TV series as well as the Krypton TV series, anything that has to do with the characters in their world. Comics, movies, TV shows, we will talk about everything and anything. We are part of the Southgate Media Group Podcasting Network. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review to help us get better. You can find me personal at JTY Patrick on Twitter and everything else. You can buy a Krypton Report t shirt at tpublic.com. Check it out. They have all sizes, colors, styles of shirts. Just go to tpublic.com and search Krypton Report and you'll see our logo. And every time you buy a shirt, it helps support other podcasts from southgatemedia.com. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Krypton Report. Today, my friends, we talk about Krypton, the episode Hope. And hope is a very powerful thing, especially to the Superman fam and the L family. But I cannot do this task alone, no. I've brought my trusty, loyal Solomon and James. Haha, <laughs> held you in suspense. You were like, oh, so he's just going to be him and Solo? Nope, not today. Solomon Superboy is chilling. <laughs> Playing some injustice in the other room. And with me, as always, is the main man himself. Not Lobo, but James. Welcome, James. Lobo, Lobo, Lobo. <laughs> Hear him talking about Lobo back there. Yep. So he's going to think of you as Lobo. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> so, okay. So we're just going to jump into this episode. Can I just say this had a Shyamalan twist that I'm still like, wow. I saw this, and the first thing I did was I messaged you. I was like, have you watched it yet? I messaged Phil. I was like, have you watched it yet? Both of you were like, no, not yet. And I just sat there like, I have to tell somebody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, it shocked me as well. So we're going to so we're gonna take a quick sec, and I get, we're going to start from beginning before we reveal the whole, oh, what the heck moment. All right, good people of ours. So here we go with. Oh, I hear. It. Yes, Jimmy. Jimmy has come into the room. Look, the laser. I thought he has another laser. To push, push. <laughs> she. He, he has. He has a glasses to cover his eyes from that laser he was doing. Oh, cool. That him. Yeah. <laughs> so let's say solo. Oh, he left the room now. Hi. I will let him know. It's me, solo. I will tell him. So the episode starts where we, see, we get a shot of the Brainiac Sentry feeding off people straight up, like not the chamber. Just people. And the last episode ended where they didn't know where the body was of the voice. And he's just, right. He's just straight up feeding, like, you know. Yeah, like some sort of succubus. And then we get a scene of Seg making out with Lyda. I'm just saying, this guy's bouncing around, man. He's. Yeah. I hope Lida and Nissa don't get talking. He's going to be in some hot water. <laughs> right. Well, you know, he's he's promised to be bonded, but then, you know, Lida and him love each other. So, but yeah, he's seems like he could be in some hot water moving forward. <laughs> this this is probably one of my favorite scenes that I take a that follows it is Seg has a nightmare and he sees Brainiac. 
and he was trying to stop Brainiac, and he's on Brainiac's ship. And I was like, this looks awesome. I was like, what? Did I miss something? No, it was in Dream. Yeah, luckily it went pretty quick. Otherwise, you're like, wait, what happened? They don't give you any sense it's a dream until it's over. And I was like, man, like that would have been actually really cool. Like, why did you do this? <laughs> right. And we also get, not that this was neat, neat right here. So we get a scene with Jax Ur and Darren Vex. And we find out that Jax Ur was actually Val's protege. And she trusted Darren. And she makes a comment. She says, my name is Jax Ur now. So what was her name, I wonder, before then? Yeah. Um, I mean, you got me, but yeah, she uh, she knew that she'd be next, being Val's protege, uh, basically in line for the death penalty. So she up and disappeared. And then moving forward, we, we find out that they're going to want to release Doomsday. And I thought, how would you stop Doomsday once he destroyed it, Brainiac? Or could you get, you know, Drew Zod makes a comment that he's an apex predator. He'll go after the top person first before he'll go after anyone else. <laughs> Excuse me. And that's why he would go after Brainiac. Well, they approach the vault and they're there and Seg shows up and makes a comment that he's not going to help Drew Zod. It takes a Zod and an L to open the tomb to get to where Doomsday's being kept. And what do we learn right here? James, I'll let, I'll let you go. Uh, uh, we learn that uh, Drew Zod is, he knows who his father is. He said he didn't, but he does now, and that his father is Seg. Boom. He is an L and a Zod. Boom. Yes. That would make him <laughs> Jor-El's half brother. Yeah. It's, it's Uncle Zod now to Kal El. Yeah. I was like, what? And then I was like, whoa. <laughs> what if, like, and I got thinking, like, what if he was born naturally? That was my thought, too. Because, um, because they keep saying, like, I got my notes later on, they keep saying, like, Jack Sir says something that they're, they're taking away our only means of re- to reproduce. Has something happened that they can't reproduce naturally? Or it's just the birthing chambers easier and better for them? What if Drew Zod was conceived naturally? And that's why Lyda like hit it and all that stuff. And well, it could be something that they haven't touched upon too much as a popu- as a method of population control right. for generations. And then what if, what if Nissa ends up being Seg's wife and Jarell's mother and they have Jarell around the same time? That's why Zod and Jarell are about the same age. And what if Seg? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. And Seg never knew that Zod was his, that General Zod was his kid. Like, I was just like, like, so that was just the twist that just blew my mind. Yeah. Um, I mean, a departure from, you know, pretty much everything we know, basically. But, um, but like we've talked about, very before, interesting twist. It seems like every time Zod appears, it's some different form of Zod. Like they've never been like, this is the definitive Zod story and look. Every time he shows up in comics, he looks different. And in movies and everything, he's different. Right. So this is their version of Zod. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, that was enough for me to be like, oh, yep, this, uh, yep, this is, uh, <laughs> this is big deal. <laughs> so we pretty much seg move doomsday with the help of Jaina Zod and Drew says, but though they couldn't have gotten far and, um, uh, so we go back and we have Jack Sir talking a little bit more about the Vera protocol. She's talking to Darren and she's torturing Darren, which is awesome. Yeah, it looked like she put like a, a B zero type symbol on his neck. So it's like marked black zero. Loved it. 
Loved it. <laughs> Just like shocking him to death. We yeah. Learned, we learned that Doomsday's chamber is failing and he will break free. And I'll be so mad if he's not in the last episode. I need to see some Doomsday, like some sweet looking Doomsday. Solomon and I. That could be pretty cool. Because um, we've been on such a Doomsday kick for some reason. Right. And well, you know, I mean, if if they continue on and it, it, it you know, basically is history, Brainiac's going to take the city. So it would be quite interesting if Doomsday is released, but Brainiac takes the city and Doomsday along with it. See, that would be cool. That would be kind of a cool twist. Um, that would probably send Doomsday through the through the cosmos someplace, some way or another. You know, Brainiac would be able to just like if it's if it broke free and started causing problems. You know, uh-huh. his entire ship is him. He could still take Doomsday and at least get him off ship before he destroys everything. And that's maybe how Doomsday eventually gets to Earth. Possibility. Um, but like we've been on such a big Doomsday cake. Like there, I like Doomsday and BVS. I just wish he had been like, I wish he hadn't went like electric looking weird thing, like energy. I wish he had just gotten more bones and like kept growing bones out of him. Like Doomsday is supposed to look because Solomon and I watched some of the scenes from Smallville with Doomsday. And I kind of wish they had just went ahead and did their own kind of death of Superman-esque thing on Smallville and really let him fight more with Doomsday. Um, Because one of the cool things yeah, that's Doomsday on Smallville is he looked good, but they kept him dark and in the shadows. So Yeah, they, they, lit, they lit a guy in, in heavy makeup really well. He looked, he looked really good uh, in the show. And the, the, the season finale of the eighth season was, was pretty disappointing when, when it came down to that whole uh, aspect of it. And they didn't do a, a death of Superman. They did a uh, just like a death of Clark Kent. Burying <laughs> of Doomsday. Clark. Yeah. It's all they buried him two miles under the earth. And I'm like, okay, yeah, eventually. Basically for him to, yeah, ev- eventually basically for him to break out of the earth and, actually uh, perform the death of Superman scenario. But this isn't about Smallville. But it could be. (laughs) Um, (laughs) We find out that Janus says I'm the Primus of the Sagittarii. So I'm wondering if Primus is the name given to the leader of the Sagittarii. Like, Like you would be like Primus Cole, if you led the Sagittarii. Right. That sounds pretty sweet. Yeah, I think so. Right. Primus Cole. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe I'll have to go as Primus Cole for Halloween or do a con. Sounds good. Yep. I like it. <laughs> um, they talk about. Um, so I wrote that down. Because Drew is lecturing Jaina about honor, respect, their whole family thing. They're going back and forth. Um, what do you call it? And he and uh, Drew Zod ends up challenging Jaina. Right. I was like, holy crap. Like, yep. I was like, wow. Like, he is. Because. Um, Seg and Jaina are aligned because she warned him about her feelings and intentions about Drew Zod being there and what he might actually be wanting to do while there. And, um, you know, Seg, he doesn't listen quite well sometimes. And, um, he did this time, which was great, but it caused them to be. Not only is, is Jaina challenged by Jerzad, the people who are protecting Doomsday turn on Seg. Right. Well, you know, I mean, Seg's got a legacy he's going to have to lead. You know, he's got an expectation of the L's that came before him and, you know, the way they earned their 
or sigil as um val l tells him in this episode um that that they earn their symbol of hope and uh you know i think i think seg's definitely gonna live up to the legacy and and you know pass it down exactly he he is picking up the family where his grandfather left off um we get the mention of Argo City. Mm-hmm. And we do see that Superman's cape's about halfway gone. Yeah, it wasn't until the last episode, I think, where they actually did a, a somewhat of a focus on it. But this one, they went right up on it. And Seg isn't sure he's doing the right thing because the the cape is almost gone. Which is interesting. It's like... We haven't seen it in a couple of episodes. We uh, Did you notice that when the AI of Val appears, it's the shield, and then it opens up to being Val? Oh, really? Like, the light shines, and it makes the shield logo, and it open as it expands, Val appears. And we, we hear Val tell Seg some things um, that... Hope is a powerful weapon, especially if for an L. So meanwhile, why Seg is getting lectured from Grandpa, the Zods are battling. And what happens in that battle, James? Uh, Well, it seems as Jaina is about to come out on top when Lyda interferes and actually shoots her mother in the side with the blaster. And pisses them both off. Like, her mother can't believe she did that to her. Because Jane even says, I failed you, Lyta. And Drew can't believe that she did that and stole his honor. Right. Um, yeah, that was, that was pretty crazy, especially since she, she did her own early, you know, early in the season. And, you know, for her to for her to to do that to break the tradition and you know, I mean that's a pretty big thing, but there's an interesting twist that comes out of that as well that I was surprised to see. If it's the one I think you're of, I kind of had expected it before and I saw I was half right about it, but we'll see if that's what you're thinking. Yeah, I had expected it before, you know, when we had seen it uh in a prior episode. Until, until it was shown to be a robot, um, some kind of training device. But yeah, that was an interesting twist that came out of out of this whole um, Zod battle thing here. Uh, one thing we haven't seen, like we get a mention of Adam. Like yeah. they don't know where Adam is. They, they probably suspect him dead or something. Yeah, from Adam the explosion. Wasn't in this episode, and neither was. But, yeah. Yeah, they said they sent Kem off to uh, Kryptonopolis, and which is still a funny name. I hate that name. But like, if I was <laughs> if I was the actor, like I would be like, "Look, guys, that's one thing I just can't buy. Like, I'm gonna have trouble with this line." Okay, hold on. Right, like you gotta come up with some other uh, scarce Kryptonian city from the comics someplace, or or make one up. But <laughs> Kryptonopolis. Yeah, that was just lazy writing. Like, yeah, pretty much. Um, but, my but yeah, they weren't. Part they weren't in the episode. Is when Darren Vex. Your favorite escaped. part? Yeah, when Vex has escaped. Oh. And he's flying, and Jaxer finds out, and she hits it, and she the, her torture device she put in his neck is long ranged, and it sh- it just starts shocking him, and he crashes. That's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny. I, I I didn't suspect that. Like he made it really far. If that how far that long range uh, torture device goes, he made it really far before they were alerted and she shocked him. Now, did you catch that Jack Sir says the name Flamebird? I did. And do you want to educate the people on Flamebird? Um. Well. 
the very little that I know about it is um, Flame Bird and Nightwing were heroes on Krypton. And it was a story that Superman had told uh, Dick Grayson after he had separated from Batman. And Dick Grayson took on the moniker of Nightwing. Uh, yes. And that's awesome. So I love that they, they just mentioned that. Because one thing we find out here is that the protocol that Jaxer was looking at, the Vera protocol, is actually... Um, a, it was a hidden thing inside the Genesis chamber of cloned Kryptonians. It was cloned people from houses and rankings of high standards. So basically, a way to live forever. Thought that was kind of neat, but curious to see where it goes. Yeah. So they decide Seg leads. They have Black Zero and the Sagittarii aligned long enough. They're going to try to stop the voice of Rao. There's a big red light in the sky. Go figure. Light in the sky. And they're going to attack the voice. And this is what I got lost. Because all of a sudden, Brainiac can control minds. Because he makes them turn on each other. Like, did I miss? Well, um, I mean, I don't know, like, I don't know why it happened in the show, but, you know, we know from the, uh, from at least the, um, 80th anniversary Action Comics 1000 that there was a story in there of Brainiac, um, controlling somebody's mind. True. True. From, from afar. But I mean that was just kind so of, that's that's all I got there on that. I'll, I'll roll with it, you know. And then we see Brainiac <laughs> basically pulls. Oh, 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 oh. Saw, saw him. Come down a little bit, buddy. <laughs> he, he gets into his injustice. Um, we see him pull Seg towards him, and it's just Seg versus the Voice, and then. The voice gets stabbed in the back of the head by the House of El Crystal by Nyssa. And like he Yeah, she jams the sunstone in the back of the in the back of his head. And then he dissolves. And then it like brought down a shield that was covering the city. Um and this was another part that I kinda threw me so the century rebuilds himself and he's brainiac. Like just straight up Brainiac? Did that throw you from? That's the way. It, <laughs> that's the way it seemed. Um, I mean, you know, Brainiac has been known to have many, uh, many bodies uh, over the years. Um, different stories uh, tell different, different ways that he's uh, inhabited many bodies, robotic and and otherwise. But um, so yeah, it seems like. Seems like the century, yeah, just put itself back together and is and is at least a brainiac proxy on the planet. Because that's what I said, and I was like, that's kind of cool, but at the same time, like, are we going to see like brainiac ship, like legit brainiac, or is this just the brainiac? We get? I don't know. It's kind of confusing because they keep talking about brainiac coming, and they've never really made the century feel like he is brainiac, but yet he is brainiac. So, yeah, well, we know the the voice and the actor for Brainiac are the same, so. Yep. That yeah. Is, um, and then, of course, we have a cloaked figure who is, uh, who bends down to help Jaina when she's shot and hurt. And who do you think that cloaked figure is, my friend? Uh, well, it seemed pretty obvious when he took off his hood and he had two different color eyes. It was her was her uh brother that she left to die in the outs in the outlands exactly and it wasn't that shocking because um i had expected him to show up earlier that's who i originally thought drew was but i'm glad he wasn't because that would have sucked um just because it would have been too you know 
too, uh, because the way he appears in that episode would have been too on the point, I think. But yeah, that was the episode Hope. What'd you think? Um, well, I mean, they're, they're kind of, they're kind of speeding up to the finish line. We got one more episode left. Um, so some things in this episode that didn't have any explanation. Um, I mean, there's precedents for it in the past. So basically it's just there. Um, for us, you know, we wouldn't really need too much explaining, you know, maybe some head can in that, but for the general audience that could be, could lose them. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I mean, I, I give, I give the episode a, uh, 8.5. Yep. I do too. Picking up the pace. It's picking up the pace, but you know what really makes me like this episode is the twist about Zod and, uh, Jarrell. Like the half brothers thing I thought was sweet. Right. Buddy. That could be an interesting thing thing moving forward. Like I mean how is like was is is Drew Zod conceived naturally and then is Jorel going to be conceived naturally with Nissa? Because uh seems like Seg is a dog, but uh um, or, or would Jorel come from the Genesis chamber? Like, it's going to be interesting where it goes. And we know now that Krypton has been picked up for a second season on sci-fi. So yeah, we'll, after we watch the next episode, we'll kind of, uh, speculate on some things that we might see carry over into season two. Because right now, the way it stands, I have no idea what season two would be. Um, yeah, it's going to be, yeah, we got to see how they end it next season and or next week. And it's probably going to be a cliffhanger. Yeah, I hope it is some sort of a cliffhanger. Uh, but it wraps up enough to feel like the season worked. Right. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh how it ends and where we think we should go from here. Sounds good to me. All right. Um, Do you want to do the action comic special? The, huh? Um, Yeah. Yeah. The action comics uh, special. Yeah. If you're up to it. Yep. I got it here. I was actually reading the Superman special. I read, uh, that. I read that last night. Did you? Yep. So we'll um, we'll uh, bring that in for our ne- next week's episode. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm little. I'm just under halfway done with it. It it was cool. We'll we'll talk about. It. Man, I, this is the one thing I hate is like something happens. I'm like, I want to make a comment to you. Then I said, No, we'll just wait and talk about it. <laughs> Solo comic. Sounds like he's having a ball. He is. He's 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 got my pop figures out now. <laughs> All right, you ready? Oh, I couldn't believe that freaking hundred oh hundred seventy dollar Bane figure. I know because as soon as you said, I was like, I was like, I know I've seen one. I have to find it. And I was looking. I was like, dear lord. <laughs> <laughs> like I I'll, I'll I'll buy the coat. It's a le- you know buy a nice leather coat like that. That's you know. I'm like, hundred and eighty dollars, but does geez, Tom, does Tommy or does Tom Hardy just show up at your door with it? Right. <laughs> Personally, a, hand deliver every paint figure. Yeah, because <laughs> that might make it worth it. <laughs> uh, right. All right, you ready? Yeah. So now we're going to take a step and we're going to dig into that beautiful thing that started this all we like to call the comics we're going to be looking at action comics special number one which i think is interesting that it's an action comics special and not just like action comics 1001 you know what i'm saying like i know they do annuals and stuff like that but it's just kind of it's kind of interesting um so it, it is I guess you can, it is part of the new continuity-ish because he does have the trunks on. 
Um, and it's just kind of funny because on the cover, he doesn't. He's in the costume he had before the trunks magically came back. And when we jump in, he has the, the trunks on. Yep. So I wonder, I, I wonder if they're going to, I wonder if they're just going to address the fact that the trunks are back or if it's just going to keep this like all of a sudden they're back and there's no nation line. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? That, that what, there was that one, uh, line where it was like, Oh, he's got the trunks again. So, I mean, that's got to be something that's going to come along and explain it. Yeah. But I'm wondering if that is, if that's because, you know, that was a, a precursor to the, the man of steel storyline that's coming out, uh, at the end of the month. But, um, no. that begins. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I would assume that that takes place after this. So the fact that he's just has, um, the red trunks on and it's just, <laughs> they're just there. Exactly. So James, won't you take the lead on this one, buddy? I've been doing a lot. Of- uh, okay. Well, uh, we start the book with uh, somebody breaking into the Fortress of Solitude. Um, seems to mimic um, Kal-El, is able to utilize the Kryptonian technology, um, access the crystals, and uh, he sees... He sees looking, he looks in on his, on Kal-El's family and he sees Lois Lane and John. And, uh, you know, as the story moves forward, you know, and, and well, in the image, in the final images of showing who broke into the, um, who broke into the fortress, you know, it looks pretty familiar, but the guy is old and he's, Got an oxygen. He's got a, a a a mask. You know, perhaps oxygen or something. Yep. Um, he's old and decrepit. Yeah. And uh, hmm? well, I was gonna say the next page has one of my favorite shots of Superman of all times. It's a uh, Superman flying, holding a pizza box. Hmm. And if that doesn't say Tyler Superman. I don't know what does. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, he's taking the pizza home, and uh, Lois is is leaving. She's um, she's heading out, and uh, Clark is bringing home a pizza for him and John. And after he gets home, John gets a text message, and he shows it to Superman, and um, it is like. The text message is outing Lois Lane, her her flight and everything as Mrs. Superman. Yeah, that she is. And Superman sends uh, John to go see Kara. Yeah. Well, if if they know who if they know who Superman is or Lois, you know, nobody's safe. Hence the secret identities. Secret identities. What are those? Oh, you mean those things that seem like super superheroes used to have that anymore they slowly don't. <laughs> Pretty much. Seem seems like in movies it's an impossibility to have a a secret identity. I think that you can have a secret identity, and uh, I think it's important. I mean, to your close friends is one thing, but just the general. You know, people, I think uh, it's needed, but. Oh, yeah, the stories are, uh, I mean, it's necessary for the stories. I mean, for supervillains, if supervillains knew uh, the secret identity of superheroes, I mean, nobody, family, friends, even the general public isn't safe from the supervillain attack when they typically cause massive amounts of collateral damage. I mean, this is an Iron Man here, people, so. But moving forward, we have a bomb that is shot, and Superman deflects the bomb and saves the plane. 
And, and of course, who does Superman go to see thinking it's the person he's after? Lex Luthor. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Yo, Back at it. Fake. Everything's Lex Luthor's fault. I mean, isn't that, uh, isn't that, uh, what do you call it? The whole deal? Like with, with Superman, it's always Lex? Pretty much. If it, if it's not if it's not extraterrestrial, it ha- it's Lex. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so he uh, he goes to see Lex Luthor, and <laughs> he's, yeah. I see your penchant for vandalizing my office building is as strong as ever. It looks like he heat visions and melts a freaking window outside outside of his office on a skyscraper. I don't know about you, but I, I'm pretty sure that, you know, skyscraper glass is pretty thick, so you can't just, like, run into it and fly out a window. Yep. Movies lie to but, us. That's why he had to use his heat vision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, I'd say that's a that's a hell of an expensive window if you just melt it, though. That's why he, uh, that's why, uh, he's Superman, and he's like, whatever, Lex. Bill me. <laughs> yeah. He does say, please give me the name of your insurance company so I can file a claim. And he's just like, ha, ha, ha. No, he doesn't say that, but it'd be funny if he did. But we see that he looks, and this is in continuity, Lex, because he says, uh, my armor no longer has your uh, symbol on it. And he says, I'm feeling dizzy, and Superman's feeling dizzy and weak. Um, Lex starts to do some investigating of his own. And then all of a sudden we see uh, a giant Lex armor mech looking thing grab Lois and drop her from a high, very high um, story. Yeah, after her elevator went rocketing through the top of the building, and she was free from it, Lexos, uh, large Lex Luthor, Lexo suit grabs her. And then, of course, Superman gets her, and then Superman, who's weak, begins fighting the Lex suit. It's a pretty yes, cool. he crashes down and destroys a Superman statue. It's a pretty sweet battle, I'm not gonna lie. And then a missile shot at Lois, and it's stopped by Lex in his armor that used to have the Superman symbol, that doesn't. And then Superman uh, takes down the big mech, rips it open, and what does he find inside? Finds an old Lex Luthor. Old, like like old, old, old like Luther, like too and old. He's too old. Like he can't take her house. He, he he's he says guess an extra seventy years makes me a little unrecognizable. I mean, seventy years. I mean, is this Lex Luther in his twenties or thirties? You know, I mean that easily puts him at near a hundred years old. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, like that's. Um, he achieved everything he ever wanted to do except for kill Superman like that is his whole that is his last mission in life is to try and kill Superman and he can't even do it yeah he has a heart attack and the suit explodes like massive explosion And, and Lex says who was it who, who was in there? Um, and yeah, Superman refuses to tell him that it's that it was him from the future. But his his comment, "What difference does it make? The abyss cons- abyss consumed him a long time ago." Is that does he believe that Lex Luthor is still? And obviously, you know, he goes to Lex Luthor so quickly for for accusations. You know, it's is that aligned to the old Lex Luthor or is that a 
align to what he believes even the, even his ex Luther is about that, that he's already a lost cause. See, and I, I, I don't want to say that it is because isn't that part of his belief, the capacity for good. There's always redemptive ability. Um, so I would feel like that doesn't sound like the Superman. I know that if he's a, if he already feels that Lex is dead, you know? Right. So I, I don't know, but I think it's very, very strong. Um, but that's the first story and the, the major story of the issue. And after that, we get a small... I didn't like this next one. At all, really. Um, it's like a dinner... And, um, basically it's a big, like, banquet, presidential type, uh, banquet, they said. And Lois is there, Clark, some of the Justice League are there. And Lex is there. And Lois gives Clark some jokes. And I just, I don't see Clark as that kind of person that would be trying to tell these jokes, these roast type jokes, because it draws a lot of attention to Clark. Yeah. Even when he's standing on, like he's standing up and on the screen behind him, Superman. <laughs> I, yeah, I saw that part too. I was like, "Why?" I didn't like it. <laughs> I'll be straight up. I did not like it. that's the story. Yeah, he um, uh, the art is a little cartoony too. Like all the characters look pretty cartoonish. the The one thing I I would say is is they did a good job of making him seem nervous trying to, to pull off these gross type jokes. Yeah. But I, I just don't see him going through with it. Yeah. Especially standing up there in front of everybody with so many images of Superman. Exactly. Like those, like those glasses better in, uh, disrupt, you know, people's image of you big time at that point, because <laughs> You're literally, I mean, it's like the, it's like the shot from Superman Returns where the kid sees Clark Kent with a picture of Superman on the screen right next to him. Yep. I mean, child like out. <laughs> and then the last one's called Superman and Lois Lane in driver's seat. And it's basically Lois in a car accident. And, you know, I like part of this. Because Superman stops the guy who's robbing a bank, and he basically says, you know, I'm going to have to turn you in, and you're going to have to stand trial, but you you do this jetpack, you built it in your garage, and you need to get a patent on it. Yeah, wants him to have a future after he's, you know, be able to make money and have a future after he... After he pays for his crime. And he says, I'll take it and I'll hide it. And when you get out, I'll bring it to you and we'll, we'll patent it. And I, th- I like that part of the story. I kind of got a little confused with, you know, Lois is talking about her car accident. And how, you know, she had this car for so long. Um, they go to a, a family, you know, her family is like cabin for Christmas. And then Clark got the seat from the car, I guess. And he puts her on it and then takes her for a flight in the sky. Which is cool, but I don't know. It it, it was okay. Yeah, it's just, yeah, that's just one of those, you know, loving stories that, you know, he'll do everything he can. You know, give her one last ride in her car, in her car's chair so she can say goodbye, seeing as... Her car was taken from her as opposed to... And I kind of, like, I I like that, but at the same time, I kind of wish that was a separate story, and the whole story was uh, her in the car, and then the guy in the bank robber was the second, was a, was a separate story. And, like, we followed him a little bit more. I, I, I don't know, I just, I would have liked that. Yeah. But what are, what is your thoughts? Who read these? What are your thoughts on uh, the Trunks, Man of Steel, coming up? 
Um, I mean, I, I, you know, we spoke about the trunks before. I like without it, but you know, I'm indifferent if they, if they, you know, are back, um, for whatever reason. Um, I grew up with Superman with the trunk. So, you know, it's only the last seven years that he's been without him. So that's not really that's seven years of kids growing up without them. And now it's in their bag <laughs> and kids are like, wait, what? And if they're just watching, he wears red underwear on the outside. If they're watching movies and TV, they're really going to be confused. Right. So, um, I mean, good, good stories. You know, the first one was very good. Uh, second one had a, had a couple of moments, you know, wasn't my favorite. And then the, the third one really just went off on a, on a strong Superman note, you know, uh, Believing in the guy, even though he, he did something wrong, you know, uh, and, and doing what he can for Lois to make her happy, you know, it's just a, just a strong Superman story, uh, really gets to the heart. And as a bonus to this episode, I have a special interview that I did with a big Superman fan. So here's that and enjoy. Welcome to the Krypton Report. I'm your host, Tyler, and with me today is not James or Jania, but I have a special guest. Um, this is just, this is power of the internet, people connecting with common goals, but I have with me Tasman. Did I pronounced that right, correct? Yep. I thought so. It's a sweet name. And Thank you. she's going to, you're welcome. She's going to introduce herself because I saw her on Twitter and Facebook for a very unique thing. That definitely spoke to me. So, Tasm, go ahead and kind of tell them why are you now famous? <laughs> well, I hope I wouldn't say famous, but um, my Superman collection's pretty much gone a little bit viral. Uh, the BBC Midlands came over to do a little interview about the collection and some of the pieces that I've got, and it kind of went out of control from there. <laughs> Which is awesome. And I saw it and I was like, I have to talk to this person. <laughs> I was like, this. <laughs> As I, as I told my wife, these are my people. We must, we must <laughs> connect. <laughs> I love that. So let's just talk real quick. Um, give us kind of a history. We've got some kind of questions that we like to ask people, but what is your history with the character? Like, when do you remember your first introduction? Just kind of a, a brief love of the character. Um, the first introduction was when I was younger I was probably about seven or eight and I used to watch the tv program the adventures of superman with my granddad and so I remember watching that and then I kind of got a little bit hooked and he showed me superman the movie um and I never really collected then I just kind of watched the tv programs and the films and things like that and then superman returns came out and then all the memorabilia came out and I could start earning my own money and things like that so that's where I kind of spiraled out of control Oh, I, I agree. Um, you know, like it or love the movie, I kind of have a love hate relationship with it. But it was the first movie that I was able to see super in theaters. Yeah. Same. And so, and I remember like, you know, I had Superman stuff and, you know, of course growing up, I had the, the animated series is the, the Bruce Tan, the justice league. And then, um, yeah. You know, you had the Christopher reasons, but they weren't as easy to find. No. And, and then, um, of course, we had Lois and Clark. But I remember when Superman Returns, you know, came out and of course Smallville. I was watching Smallville, of course. Um, I just remember walking to Walmart one day after work at a huge display that had like all the old Superman things on sale. So I was like, ah. so I bought all the movies, all, um, you know, I just Lois and Clark season one because for the longest time that was the only season you could find. Yeah. And so it was just, it was a good time because it was like Superman was back. People were excited. Um, so I, I'm totally on board with that. Like, yeah, I, 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 that's the film that got me properly collecting. I think so I, I used to like Superman before anyway, but, and I was also into superheroes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, so much stuff came out, all the toys and the memorabilia, and I bought T-shirts and posters and everything. It was, yeah, I loved it. it it's kind of like um, this is a sidestep to that other DC character, but you know, people hate on Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, 
And I yeah, see- I remember watching those when I was younger, and I used to watch it over and over again. And, and I, I watched like, it recently, and it was terrible. <laughs> and granted, I mean, they're not the best, but like because of my childhood memories, I love them. And like, yeah. And my son is more interested in watching Batman and Robin just because of the the colors, all the characters. So he really enjoys it. And I'm like, you know what? He'll like that when he's a kid. And then as he gets older, you know, he'll like the other films. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, I, I, you know, and I just remember being that time with all the merchandise and memorabilia, like, you know, going to Taco Bell to get a Batman cup or uh, <laughs> cereals and things like that. It was exciting as a kid. Yeah. And the, I kind of miss that. Like, they don't do as much as they used to. No, they don't. There's, there's still a lot of merchandise out there, but it's. I think a lot of it's more t- um, targeted at kids. So you've got you've got the like the sideshow collectible figurines and stuff that are worth, well, they cost a fortune. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I just want the guy who's like six inches to play with, and then when I'm done, I just put him on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. well, I don't take anything out the box, so. I, when I buy stuff, I don't even get to play with it. I just look at it and put it on the side. <laughs> I have a lot of things that are still like box. I got things that are put to the side on the shelf. I got, and then I have the things that uh, are playable. It's, it's, you got to have something to play with. Yeah. And like I have, I bought the uh, Smallville Clark Kent pop figure. And it's yeah. A pop figure I don't have open. The other ones are just like simple, easy, you know, generic ones. And Solomon's always like, can I play with that one, Daddy? No. He doesn't, <laughs> don't touch it. He doesn't understand. He's like, why is that so in the box, Daddy? Um, he just looks at me like, what? And I got a really cool um, 12-inch collectible Zod um, that's still encased that I got for Christmas one year. So it's, mm. so let's, we're going to keep talking here. Yep. Um. And uh, this is the beautiful thing about not doing things live. I can <laughs> my my wife start making breakfast for the uh, kids upstairs. I love them; uh, they're energetic. Yeah. They're How many have you got? I have two, and then my my nephew's here. Uh, so my, my daughter is one, and oh. I'm three, and my nephew's five. So they're all excited. That's good age. They're cute. Oh yeah. That's a cute yeah. Age. They're great. They're amazing, and they were they're up there watching Batman. Uh, <laughs> they're watching Batman Unlimited Mex versus. Uh, I got them all. Like, you know, <laughs> Solomon loves Batman, and right now he's he's really getting into Superman more. Like he likes, yeah. Superman, but like for some reason he's on a Doomsday kick. <laughs> really? Like, yeah, he's like. We were at the store and we found a, a Doomsday toy, and he was like, oh. "So of course I had to get it for him." Yeah, he's pr- it does look pretty impressive for kids. And my, my little brother, he's um, he's nine, and he's obsessed with Spider Man. But when I'm around, he pretends that it's not Spider Man and that his favorite superhero is Superman. So he just lies to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so I'm like Spider Man too, and I'm like, that's cool. That's my favorite Marvel. Mm. Uh, so, so tell me before we get into who, what does the character, like, why, why, why are you interested in the character? What makes the character appealing to you? Why, why Superman? Um, just something that, well, cause I was kind of brought up on Superman. It's always been a kind of a part of me and I've always been drawn to the character. Um, but I just love the difference between like, he's the most powerful superhero in the world. And then you've got his alter ego, Clark Kent, who's, you know, just a basic, geeky guy and I just I love that they they're the same person that they combine. Um I love what he stands for. I love the colours and the comics and the artists and everything like that, all the storylines, all the villains. Just a little bit of everything. I love everything about him. Are you are you reading the current comics? Um I haven't read the current ones. Um because when I started collecting I kind of just got like hundreds of comic books in one go so I didn't really read them all I read the odd mm-hmm. one and um, so I'm trying to catch up on the old ones before I start the new ones I will say that the Superman rebirth storyline is really good and I liked uh, Solomon and I visit the library often and <clears throat> my library is neat because they do individual issues of books so that's that's yeah. how I stay current on a lot of stuff uh, I get behind um, now the, with the character 
you know, it, it's neat because as, as anyone who's listening might be able to tell, I'm from the United States. Tasman is not. <laughs> and this, it, it shows that the character spans the globe. You know, that's, that's yeah. always been, I think, a very important is that the character is more than just um, one, you know, demographic. Like, it's, it touches everybody for different reasons. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's an appealing aspect of the character to me. Um, and he's been going for 80 years, so he's got to yes. be good. <laughs> like, we... we um, we live about two hours away from Cleveland and the mm. public library here in Ohio um, had a little display in the called from, um, from Cleveland to Krypton. And they had Jerry Siegel's original desk where he created Superman on it. And they had yeah. some different memorabilia, stuff like that. Yeah. And, and it's just kind of neat to think like, you know, the, the people that create Superman, the writers are, you know, they were from two hours away from where I'm at. Yeah, that's 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 amazing. And I don't have anything like that. <laughs> and I'm like, and then I think I wrote a whole article. It's like, why wasn't Smallville in Ohio? <laughs> but there's a whole yeah. <laughs> there's a whole convoluted history of where Smallville's located, and eventually they settled on Kansas, and I'm just kind of stuck. But I was like, it made more sense if it was Smallville, Ohio. But I digress. Yeah. <laughs> so with your collection. Um, like how much space do you think it takes up? Like, you know, that's always one of the problems when you collect um, having somewhere to put it. Like right yeah. now I'm currently sitting in my basement and we just moved into this house. That's pretty impressive though. <laughs> yeah. If I can see, I have my computer more like, let's see if I can get more of like my Superman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can see the pop in the box still. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we just moved into the house and one thing was great was the way this house is laid out in the basement. I was able to get out my collection. I was able to, you know, it's been a lot of it's been packed up and stuff like yeah. that. So I understand about space. So how do you deal with the space of having your collection? Well, I mean, at least you have a basement. I live in a um, a three story flat. And so we don't have a basement or anything like that. And it's it's not the biggest. It's only two bedroomed. Um, I still live with my mom. So one's hers, one's mine. Um, and my room is, it literally looks like a 10 year old boy's bedroom. It's just full of, full of Superman stuff. And then you've got the odd sort of like makeup thing in the corner. I've got a lizard in the corner called Kalal as well. Um, but everything's in the attic pretty much. Um, it's all boxed up and I'm just kind of waiting to move out before I can to get it all out because there is a lot and it would not fit in my room. One day. One day. You know, yeah. when, you, when you get your own place and then, uh, you know, down the line you find somebody and you're like talking about marriage, you're like, all right, here's the copy. Out. We have to have a house <laughs> or a flat that has a room just for Superman. If you can't deal with that, we ain't getting married. Well, we've, I've, well, my boyfriend at the minute, we've been together six years awesome. um, and we're starting to kind of, think about getting a place um, because he lives two hours away from where I live and he lives in Wales so we've already agreed that I'm having a Superman room that's the that's the condition (laughs) that's that's a that's a kind of a joke I have my wife and I'm like I'll just tell her sometimes I'm like I love you she's like yeah I'm like I have a basement room with Superman stuff and you put up (laughs) I'm like I'm like that's that's a very special one she's like no it's fine I'm like um because I, I agree with you. like I have my mother in law made um, two years ago for Christmas. She made everybody homemade fleece blankets as a gift, mm-hmm. and I have because I'm tall. She made a really big Superman blanket that fits me so that it's taller than <laughs> me and wider, so I can really wrap up in it. And That's I love awesome. that. <laughs> I love that blanket. Like it's mine. And like you said, like um, my favorite pillow ripped, and what my wife does, she restuffed it. And then uh, took an old Superman pillowcase that uh, I had and sewed it and made it special. So like, I have my own. So that's my pillow. I sleep. So yeah, I totally get the whole. Yeah. Like, is this a child's room? No, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's times where I kind of I go to a shop and buy stuff, and they're like, "Oh, your, your son will love that," and I'm like, "It's, it's for me." <laughs> Well, one of the greatest things was my wife would pick on me like, "We can't go to Toys R Us until we have kids," and I was like. Thank you. Then we had a kid. I was like, guess where we're going? 
I went there a few weeks ago, actually, because um, they, they closed down, so all the uh, stores in the UK were on sale. So I, I went hoping to find a load of Superman stuff, but they, they didn't really have anything, which is well, disappointing. What sucks is we went to the, there's one by us is a Toys R Us baby, our babies are us, and we went to it um, because we wanted to buy a double stroller for the kids, and it was like all the toys were 10, 20 percent off, and the shelves were empty. And I'm like, you know, the prices are going to keep dropping, people. I know, yeah. Wait till the last minute. And, and then my friend's like, well, the Toys R Us in Cincinnati is like, we're still packed. I'm like, all right, road trip. <laughs> <laughs> so with your collection, what do you think is, what is your favorite piece? Like, it doesn't have the most valuable piece, but like, mm-hmm. which one speaks to you? And I actually want to show you something. I'll uh, grab it real quick. Yeah. See this awesome Brendan Ralph Superman statue? Yeah, I have that. <laughs> So I was at my local shop and they had a flood and the box was damaged. Mm. Marked it down to $5. Just there was water damage on the box. Nothing. Yeah. And I was like, uh, yeah. I'm like, five bucks. <laughs> Bargain. And then here's my chunk of kryptonite from uh, <laughs> Illinois. Yeah, I'm hoping to go there next year. I was hoping to go this year, but I couldn't afford it. I would love to go again. Um, we, we I haven't been for Superman celebration because mm-hmm. my wife took me for my birthday, and I liked it because it was, you know, it's a small town and everything. So it was nice because we got to walk around, got to go to the yeah. Superman Museum, which is epic beyond belief, and. So now that I've, I've went once and I've, I know, I've been there, I want to go again to, you know, for a celebration. Yeah. Uh, I digress again. So <laughs> what is your yeah, um, piece of your collection? Um, my favorite piece is probably, I've got a few autographs. Um, from, well, I met uh, Brandon Routh and Dean Kane, so I've got their autographs. Um, they're probably the most the most well protected things that I've got. Um, I've got a few, well, a few of the comics that I've got are pretty. Uh, some of my favourites. So I've got the Superman versus Muhammad Ali, which is also probably the most expensive one that I've got. Um, and I've got Superman versus Spider Man. Uh, I, I want that one because we saw that while we were in Cleveland, and yeah. so yeah, I definitely would love to have a copy of that one day. Yeah, I got it on eBay for fifteen pound. It was. It's not so bad. It's probably, yeah, maybe about twenty five dollars. Yeah, something so like that. Well, it was too early for that, but that sounds about right. Yeah, um, but I think it was some woman who I think her dad had died, and he had loads of comics and stuff. And she was just selling it all, and she started it at ninety nine p, and then obviously someone else clicked, and I was bidding against them for about fifteen minutes. But you won. Yeah. You're like, do you know who I am? You give me this. <laughs> you have to know who I Just am. Just wait until the last few seconds and then I put a bid in. <laughs> I've done that before. Um, I just want a John Stewart Green Lantern toy mm. for Solomon because we were watching Justice League, the cartoons of, and then he watches the movie. And he's like, where's Green Lantern, Daddy? Mm. And he's like, I need Green Lantern toy. And they're so hard to find. Yeah, I, I really wanna... thought he was going to be in that film. Yeah, that's that's a whole nother discussion that yeah. <laughs> my buddy James and I are holding off on because we're going to do a whole commentary on the movie because there's so much more information that's come out about what it was supposed to be. Yeah. Um, and it's still coming out, isn't it? There's still loads of stuff coming yeah. out every day. It's, it's crazy. Um, so let's talk. You have your collection and it's mm-hmm. neat because, you know, like you, you're a woman and a lot of people don't think about you know women collecting or yeah. loving some of these characters like they do um which i don't get it but people are dumb <laughs> so what when you started collecting have you ever had like negativity from anybody or was it always like that's a weird hobby why, why are you doing um, not really negativity i've my family when i did start collecting my family were like oh you geek you nerd but they were. They didn't mean it maliciously. They were just joking. Um, so yeah, I didn't really take offence. And my friends aren't really into the same kind of thing either. So when we go out, I don't really talk about 
all of the Superman stuff I got this week. It's they they don't they don't understand it really. So yeah, I've never really had negativity, um, but I've had sort of like jokes. I'm like, oh, you nerd and things like that. But that's about it. Yeah, uh, you're like. I don't know. That's that's kind of what's funny. It's like it's like the people around me aren't negative because I don't have anyone. But then you know I've met people through the podcast and through the website and everything. Yeah. That is just like yeah. So we like just talk like, do you see this? Like um. Yeah, exactly. The people that I speak to talk um talk about Superman to are people off kind of like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and things like that. And it, that's why I like using those kind of things because you've got well, people with the same interests as you exactly example of this conversation um yeah now i know they're about to bring krypton to the uk has it started to air there yet or not yet but i may have watched it <laughs> somehow your secret save is good <laughs> i think it's funny like one <laughs> My one friend's like, you got to see this one part. And so, like, oh, this one show. So he literally filmed it, like, with his camera. <laughs> phone and sent me it. He's like, watch this. I haven't watched last night yet. But what do you what do you think about this no, show? Right now? And just, just a general, like. Yeah, I, re- I really like it. There's a few times, I think it was more the first episode or two where the acting was kind of, it's because, well, it's, it's like an American TV program meets a British one. So you've got, mm-hmm. they've all got English accents kind of thing. And it just, it's, it, it probably doesn't feel the same for you, but when I watch it, it just seems like they've mixed the two together. And sometimes the acting is a little bit off. Cause I think British humor is different to mm-hmm. American humor. So yeah. But I love BBC America. Just throwing that out there. Like, yeah, there's a lot of good programs, uh, you know, and stuff. So, um, but no, I, I understand what you mean. Yeah. Um, and, but other than that, I, I love it. I, I watch it every week. Um, but because it's on in America at a certain time, I have to watch it. Well, I watch it today, basically. I haven't watched it yet. but Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably watch it after my nephew leaves and everything. Yeah. Um, I really like General Zod. I'm going yeah. spoilers for people. <laughs> um, but I thought that casting was great and everything. That, that was a surprise, and I really like yeah where they went with that um so what it, with with the current things what did you do the can't talk supergirl <laughs> do you watch supergirl yeah i'm not up to date with it though i think i'm about four or five episodes behind um especially with the weird breaks and stuff they take here in america yeah and because I've, I've been trying to watch it because i was i've well, I watched it ages ago and then I kind of stopped watching all of them. So Arrow and Flash and Supergirl and Legends of Tomorrow. And then I kind of wanted to catch up on them all. So I've been watching them all in order because um, sometimes they cross over and things. Mm-hmm. So it's taken me ages to catch up and I've still not done it yet. <laughs> but um, I, I really did, did you see the episodes with Superman from last season? Yeah. What he, did you think about that? He's not my favorite Superman, but he did a good job. And I did. He did have a good suit, actually. His suit was really cool. Um, I think he could be really good. I like what everything that he did. Mm-hmm. We just didn't get enough of him, you know. Like he's he's the he's the side character, and I get that. But it's like he just has a right blend, I think, to make of the old versus the new, and he could be a really good. Yeah. If he was given the the chance to, you know. Um, play it more when focused on him to where but I, I liked it I, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about him being it. yeah I'd seen pictures um because obviously I, I caught up quite late so it had already been on by the time I watched it but I saw pictures of him in the suit and on the set and stuff and I was really skeptical about it I was I didn't it, well from what I saw or the picture that I saw it didn't look like Superman to me um, but when I saw him in action he was yeah he, he really impressed me yeah that's why I tell people like don't judge these behind the scenes pictures and you know, yeah that's supposed to be bad <laughs> your tangent wait till you see it in context I mean seeing some an actor sitting in their chair drinking in like part of their costume or whatever is not going to determine no exactly um, now you said he's not your favorite who is your favorite um well, it depends what kind of style. So you've got 
So you got now you got like Henry Cavill in his more realistic take on Superman, or well, in Man of Steel anyway, and Batman vs Superman. Um, he's kind of he's brought Superman to now, like to this kind of time. So he's he's my favorite, um, and because he's probably the first Superman that I've seen that I've that's been in more more than one film, so you've kind of seen him mm-hmm. uh, progress in the character and stuff as well. Um, but like I said, the, Dean Cain's also one of my favourites because he's the first the first one that I was introduced to. See, I think everyone comes, like when the, they have their favourite where it gets them in a certain place. Like, um, I mean, if I had to pick one, my favourite is, ironically, is uh, Tom Willing from Smallville. Yeah. Because, you know, I just started high school same time that Clark was starting high school. And yeah, it's like the Harry Potter thing. So you grew yeah. up with him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, you know, and we got 10 seasons of him developing this character. And of course, you know, someone could argue he's not Superman. Whatever, we're not going to argue that. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and I mean, I love, I love Chris, you know, and like I remember watching him as a child and what that means. And, you know, but, you know, certain and then Dean and certain actors just hit you at certain times with the character. Yeah. And I really like, you know, I really do like Cavill a lot. I really like what he did in justice. I just want to see that character progression now into his own movie of, you know, where he was in man of steel, figuring himself out. Yeah. And then I felt like we got a little bit in BVS of him and a little bit in justice. League. he needs his own movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, That's what I'm waiting for. There's been a lot of rumors though, and Henry Cavill seems to be the one that is pushing for for the new film. So hopefully he gets to. Well, he's, he's going to be in another one anyway because I think I read that he's still got one more film in the contract or something like that. Yeah, he, yeah. I know. I know he's a fan of Superman as well as playing him. So I hope mm. that he gets to decide yeah. what happens. I I. Cause, you know, I don't always know like what gets released, where, when, how it works. Um, mm. Do you watch the DC animated films that they've been coming out with? Like when they did Superman uh, Unbound. And now we have the upcoming Superman Doomsday. I haven't seen them, actually. Um, I've got a few on DVD, but... I got them quite a long time ago, so I put them straight into storage. Um, but I haven't watched them yet. But I've seen the trailer for the the new one, which looks really good actually. So I'm, I'm gonna, definitely going to watch that. I, I, Solomon really wants to watch it because Doomsday is in it. But I think I'll have to watch it first because I'm I'm going to cry <laughs> during it. And then, <laughs> I mean, my son already loves The Lion King and wants to watch it all yeah. the time. And I'm like, you know, what emotional trauma you put me in watching Mufasa have to die <laughs> and over and over. I'm like, come on, son. See, my problem is I cry at, like, weird films. So if I watch a film that is definitely sad and, eat, like, everyone cries at it, I won't cry at that film. But if I watch another film, like, for example, I watched Casper a few months ago and that made me cry. And I was like, I, ne- I never cry. Because, like, something about, like, there's stuff that gets me now as a parent, like, like that, that you don't think. I'm like, dang it. What was it? I was, I was well, oh, when... I didn't even think about, I felt stupid after I did it, but I didn't even think about it. So when Solomon was born, I was in the hospital and I was with him and my iPad and I was like, I'm going to watch something. I'm going to watch Man of Steel. Didn't even think about, I'm holding my new baby boy first. And then like the scene about having to send him off on a rock. I was like, crap. <laughs> I'm like, nope. I'm like, this is getting to me. I, I, I get it now. Like, it's, it's, it takes on a whole new meaning. Um, yeah. Right there. And, yeah, it's just it'll it'll get you. It'll get it'll get the it'll get the yeah. flow. <laughs> you know, well, I'm just sitting here. What are other things like? Do you prefer reading about the character? Do you prefer the cartoon? Do you prefer the movies? Like, what's your favorite way of like the character of of um, getting the character? I could say a, a bit of everything, really. I, I, I love seeing it on the big screen and on TV, um, especially in the cinema, because, you know, you've got your favorite character who's, what, well, you know, cinema size. Um, and I love all the effects and things like that. So I, I love seeing it, it 
on the cinema because you don't really have to think about it or use your imagination. It's, it's there. But I do also love the comics and the ones I've been reading recently are the the action comics, the very first ones. Mm-hmm. So I love reading, especially considering what the character's like now and his kind of morals are even better than what they were before when he was first created. Um, so there's there's some bits where he he kind of threatens people. I know. Threatens, have, you seen, have you seen it? He, threat, he threatens someone that he was going to rip out their heart and make them eat it if they didn't tell the truth and <laughs> things like that. So I, I love that. That's um, the so Superman I do, you bring back. That's, what, that's the Superman I want to see on TV. Yeah, same. But yeah, I, I, love, I do love reading about him. Um, you know, I, I bought the 80th anniversary big hardback and it has a bunch yeah. of, you know, the old ones. And I have a book somewhere that I've yet to find during the move of, and this, some of our books went missing before and I'm afraid it might've been attached, but it was like a, all the old dailies of Superman from the thirties where they ran it in the daily newspaper comics. Yeah. And you, like you said, the, mm. the little bit of differences, like how the character was and the type of villains he fought. And even I love, like you said earlier, like Superman's power. I love that he's like so powerful, but yet he restrains himself. He that's that's like his greatest superpower is the like compassion and his ability yeah. to restrain himself. Because it would be so easy exactly. to make everybody do what you want, or because I've, I've never been a fan like of like you know the idea of the bad Superman character. Um, you know, I understand like in in the Injustice game and comics where that started from because of what happened. Spoilers, not going to, you know, give that away because it's definitely a shocker if you haven't yeah. seen it or read it. I played the games as well. So I understand where it comes from, like, but to me, he's the character that he could do that. Um, one of my favorite Superman stories, if you ever get a chance, um, is Superman Grounded by Michael J. Straczynski. And basically, he decides he's going to walk across the U.S. to stay with the people. And there's like little things that happen. And there's one that just gets to me because I think it's just so beautiful. And where he stops an abusive father. And I'm not going to say everything because it's a great, you know, yeah. to, to look at the imagery and read it. And I think that's, you know, that to me is what speaks about the character. Um, and it's just something that I think. You know, people want to argue and say that he's out of time and he's, you know, the unbelievable or whatever. But I'm like, he's the character that you strive to be because yeah. that's, cause that's the idea. He, he can be it, can't you? That's the thing. The, the yeah. things that he does, and especially in the, in the old comics. Yeah, like the, oh. the old comics. You know, the, with the old comics, you know, like the first one, he stops, uh, saves a person's life on death row, stops. Uh, yeah domestic violence and i you know the idea is that superman is even into i think today's age more he's the ideals that we want some people are afraid to fight for and afraid to stand up for it's easier to like um like i'm not a fan of like the anti-hero characters Mm. uh, which is ironic because i'm wearing punisher pants right now but (laughs) there's this brand of like sleep pants that i don't care what's on it i'll buy them because they're so comfortable and they had a bunch on clearance and I got like, I got a Pokemon pair. I got, um, them just like, they're comfortable. I don't care. You know, as long as it's not, I'm, there's I'm, nothing wrong with Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's all comfortable. Um, so as long as it's nothing I, I disagree with, uh, I'll buy them. Okay. But like mm. what I was saying with that, with the anti heroes is yeah, I understand those characters and I get, and I get them, but it'll never be the characters that I truly identify with. Yeah. Um, I, I get what their appeal because, um, you know, people sometimes that's, we want the vigilante justice. We want, you know, we want to just be able to, but it's harder to, to do the, the, the good. And that's what Superman represents. I think a lot of with the antihero um, characters, a lot of people like them because they think, oh, if that happened to me, I'd do that. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So like, like the Punisher, he kind of, he goes mm-hmm. after um, the people that killed his family. And so a lot of people would think that, well, they'd like to think that that's what they would do in that situation, but really they wouldn't. Exactly. I, I, you know, and, and I think that's like, when you look at Superman and even Supergirl, the character, because I think in some ways she has a more tragic story than he does because mm. she knew like 
he was a baby when he left the planet. Yeah. He grew up. She remembers. Long. She remembers. She knows what she lost. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's a huge hole in somebody. But yet, instead of going crazy and being angry and uh, lashing out, they, yeah. they try to do what's right. And that's, you know, that's what appeals to me about the character. And what's us uh, taking it back to like collecting and stuff. What's funny is in my family, um, people like, oh, Tyler's birthday's coming up or Christmas. What is Tyler like? I don't know. Just give him something Superman. He'll like it. That's how we get like so much stuff is because a lot of times people, um, they, they don't remember what to get me. Yeah. And they just, you know, get me Superman stuff. Like, I oh, don't like it. He'll be good. That's, that's kind of what it's like with me. But, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of my family and friends buy me Superman stuff for birthdays and things like that. My, my friends, uh, it was my birthday a few weeks ago, so my friends got me, um, you know, oh, I can't remember what they're called. It's like an Italian money box where you fill it up and then you smash it. Oh, I can't what, what it's called. Um, it begins with T, I remember that. But And it says Tasman Superman Fund, and it's it's all in Superman colors. And they were like, oh, you have to fill it up, and then you smash it. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm just not going to use it because I don't want to smash it. Yeah, you're like, uh, I'll just set this over here, guys. Um, it's too yeah, it's just on the shelf. <laughs> I uh I had a I just recently got new license plates and because Superman was created in Ohio, you can get a license plate with the Superman symbol on it. I was like, yes, because like they came out, uh, you know, a couple of years ago and I didn't know if they still had them. And he's like, yeah, we do. I was like, send them to me. So <laughs> I'm like adding more Superman to my uh uh you know to my collection and just yeah. everywhere I go. So well. We could probably talk for hours and, talk, you know, maybe after I get you back on sometime, we'll talk more Krypton. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of neat. Like you said, having that British uh, perspective of the show that everyone has British accents and a lot of the actors are British and us Americans are like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, we just take it. And then, you know, when you get to look at some of the cultural things of the, the acting and he's like oh I didn't, I didn't think about it like that um mm. so if people want to reach out to you on twitter facebook email i know i know your information but i'll, I'll let you go ahead and promote yourself how you want okay um well i'm gonna have to get get the the actual names of what they are because they're all kind of different but i have a blog which is uh the aspiring uh, i have and you can get all of the social media stuff off there, but I've also got Instagram, which is the Aspiring Kryptonian, or Twitter, which is Aspiring Crypto. Or I'm also I've also got a group on Facebook, which is the Aspiring Kryptonian Superman Super Superman Superfan. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I'm gonna put all that in our show notes. Um so that when this goes up, I'm not I'm not sure when this episode's gonna go up because Rob's behind him, pushing him. So, That's okay. Uh, but no, thank you for coming today. I'm sending you a message yeah. right now. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> with just asking, you know, just, um, so I can cut and paste it. But basically, just send me an email with um, all that. I'll put it. would be easier to put in the show. I'm always afraid, like, I'll press something wrong and then everyone's going to, like, the wrong page to look for you. Right? <laughs> oh. Well, when I did, I did um, when I, an interview with, but after the BBC one, I was on uh, the Channel Five interview thing, and they spelled she, the woman said, "Can you say your name and spell it out just so I like, make sure I spell it all right?" And she spelled my last name wrong. She, she put it as Pump Fries instead of Pump Fries, so H M P f r i e s or something like that and i was like that's not my name <laughs> yep i have three first names and people i know put them in different order so i'm like it's they're not hard to spell they're just i guess hard to put in the correct order so <laughs> but all right well thank you for taking the time i know we've had to yeah. we've had to uh reschedule a couple times personal things mm -hmm. that came up for me yeah. um i appreciate it so thank you tasman for chatting and I said we could Thank chat you. forever, but let's definitely want to have you back and talk more. So, yeah, let me know when you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, 
Facebook at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, please leave us a review to help us get better. If you're an Amazon shopper, just remember you can go to southgatemediagroup.com. There's a portal log into Amazon, and you'll shop into your account just regular, but it also helps keep all the podcasts on and helps keep Southgate running. Remember, look up in the sky.